Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing some amount of substance exam questions. Feel free to go ahead and answer the questions. I'll put the link in the description. When hydrated strontium chloride is heated, the water of crystallization is removed, leaving a residue of anhydrous strontium chloride. A student carries out an experiment to find the value of X in the formula of hydrated strontium chloride, which is SrCl2. The student's method is outlined below. Step 1. Weigh an empty crucible and then add the hydrated strontium chloride to the crucible and reweigh. Step 2. Heat the crucible and contents for 10 minutes and allow to cool and reweigh. Step 3. Heat the crucible and residue for another 5 minutes. Allow to cool and weigh the crucible and residue. Repeat step 3 a further 2 times. The student's results are shown below. So we've got a lot of information here to break down. It helps to annotate the question to help you identify the important pieces of information. So first we have the mass of the empty crucible in grams. Then we have the mass of the crucible with the hydrated strontium chloride. So we can use that to calculate the mass of the hydrated strontium chloride. And then we have the first mass of the crucible with the residue. We have the second mass of the crucible with the residue. The third mass of the crucible with the residue. And the fourth mass. And you can see that between the third and the fourth masses, there is no change in the mass. So this is the actual mass of strontium chloride with all the waters of crystallization removed. So then to find the mass of strontium chloride, we need to do the fourth mass or the third mass of the crucible subtracted from the mass of the empty crucible, which is 17.58 minus 15.96, which gives us 1.62 grams. And to find the moles, we use the equation moles equals mass over MR. So the moles is equal to 1.62 grams divided by 158.6 grams per mole, which gives us 0 0.0102 moles. Then we can find the mass of water removed by subtracting the mass of the crucible and hydrated strontium chloride, which is 18.65 grams, by the fourth mass of the crucible, which is 17.58 grams, because that fourth mass is the mass with all the water removed. And that gives us 1.07 grams. Then to find the moles of water, we use the same equation, moles equals mass over MR, and we divide the mass 1.07 grams by the MR, which is 18 grams per mole for water, which gives us 0.0594 moles, then we use the same technique as when we're finding the empirical formula to find the value of x. So we divide each by the smallest number of moles, which is the moles of strontium chloride, which is 0 0.0102. That gives us 1 for strontium chloride and 5.8 for H2O. So the formula is SrCl2 dot 5.8 H2O. So that gives the value of x as 5.8. Suggest so why the student takes four readings of the mass of the crucible and residue. And this is a technique that helps to ensure that all the water of crystallization has been removed because if they didn't heat to a constant mass, then there could still be some waters of crystallization left in the crystal structure. And that would lead to an invalid value of x in the calculation. Then we're being asked to suggest two modifications to the method that would reduce the percentage uncertainty in the mass of the residue. So we need to recall the formula for the percentage uncertainty, which is the uncertainty divided by the measurement multiplied by the number of measurements. So to reduce the percentage uncertainty, we can either decrease the top of the fraction by decreasing the uncertainty by using a balance that weighs to more decimal places. So in the experiment, they measured to only two decimal places, so we could measure to three decimal places. And we could also increase the bottom of the fraction to reduce the percentage uncertainty by increasing the measurement by using a larger mass of hydrated strontium chloride. Zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid as shown in the following equation. So zinc reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride, which is a salt, and hydrogen gas. A student investigates this rate of reaction. The student plans to react 50 centimetres cubed of 0.1 mole per diem cubed HCl with 0.2 grams of zinc, which is an excess. That's a key bit of information. Calculate the volume in centimetres cubed of hydrogen that should be produced at room temperature and pressure. So we can find the moles of HCl that we're reacting using the formula moles equals concentration times volume. So the moles is going to be 50 divided by 1000 to convert to decimeters cubed, multiplied by 0.1 mole per dm cubed, which gives us 5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HCl. So then to find the moles of hydrogen gas formed, because the HCl is the limiting reagent as the zinc is in excess, we need to find the moles of hydrogen by dividing the moles of HCl by 2, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles, because 
there's one mole of H2 in the equation and two moles of HCl. So then to find the volume, we use the we use the equation which only applies at room temperature and pressure, which uses the molar gas volume which is 24 decimeters cubed or 24,000 centimeters cubed. In this case, we use 24,000 because it's centimeters cubed. And the equation is volume is equal to 24,000 times the moles. So that's 24,000 times 2.5 times 10 to the minus three, which is 60 centimeters cubed. Phosphine, pH three is a gas form basing phosphorus acid H3PO3 in the absence of air. We have four phosphorus acid going to phosphine and three moles of phosphoric acid. So 3.2 times 10 to minus two moles of phosphorus acid is completely decomposed by this reaction. Calculate the volume of phosphine gas formed in centimetres cubed at 100 ki kilopascals pressure and 200 degrees Celsius. So this is not room temperature and pressure, so we're going to need to use the ideal gas equation, which is PV equals NRT, which means pressure times volume is equal to moles times the molar gas constant times the temperature. We need to convert to the correct units first. So for pressure, the correct units is pascals. So we need to multiply 100 by 1,000 to convert to pascals, which is 100,000 pascals. Then for temperature, we have 200 degrees C, and we need to convert to Kelvin, so we need to add 273. And then we need to rearrange the equation for volume. So that's volume equals moles times the molar gas constant times the temperature divided by the pressure. And then we need to remember for the moles, we have 3.2 times 10 to minus 2 moles of phosphorus acid. We need to find the moles of pH 3, which is going to be 3.2 times 10 to minus 2 divided by 4, because we have a 4 to 1 ratio, which gives us 8 times 10 to the minus 3 moles, times the molar gas constant, which is 8.314, multiplied by 473 Kelvin, divided by the pressure, which is 100,000 pascals. And that gives us a volume of 3.15 times 10 to the minus 4, but this is in meters cubed. So to convert to centimeters cubed, we need to multiply this by a million, which gives us 315 centimeters cubed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my compounds, formulae and equations exam questions video, which should be in the bottom right hand corner now. You can also check out my website to purchase my notes and flashcards. The link will be in the description below.